the, uh, the owners and the employees here in the shop. Thank you so much for having us. I've been here before. I this place is great, so please uh, order a lot of stuff from them. They're really nice of us to, to host you. As Lindsay said, I'm here to talk mainly about uh, the jobs plan uh, from our, our campaign. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I see a lot of familiar faces in the room, but some new ones as well. So I'll give you a brief intro. I really want to focus on the jobs plan. But as Lindsay said, uh, my name is Manny Trevetti. I'm running for Congress here in the 6th. I'm an Iraq War veteran, also a primary care doctor. I was born and raised uh, in Berks County, um, just north of here. Uh, I product of the public schools, went to college and medical school in Boston, served in Iraq with the Marines, part of the first units to enter Iraq. Unfortunately saw a lot of action in Iraq. Uh, we were the, the first person to die in the entire conflict, it was a junior lieutenant from my battalion. Uh, we were in Baghdad the day that Saddam's statue was brought down. We were on the other side trying to secure one of Saddam's palaces, sent about 100 men home with Purple Hearts in one hour during that mission and lost another gunnery sergeant. Uh, so that was a very formative experience for me. That's part of the reason I'm running today, to make sure we have that perspective in Congress. But besides fighting on the front lines in Iraq, I've also fought on the front lines of this health care crisis as a primary care doctor. I've seen the plight of the uninsured. I know how inefficient this health care system is. And those are big issues for me. Military and veterans issues, health care. There's a lot of other big stuff that we need to be addressing in Congress, the environment, and education, and foreign policy. But in my opinion, the biggest issue by far in this district and in this country is getting this economy back on track and that is that means getting people back to work. If we can't put people back to work and start turning these unemployment numbers around, everything else is secondary. If we can't put food on the table, we can't go on to address all these other big issues like uh, continued health care and environmental uh, and educational reform. And that's why I focused heavily on figuring out how to get people back to work, how to uh, facilitate uh, this uh, economy moving again. You know, after I finished uh, my medical training, I'm a board certified internist, I actually went back to school and got a master's in public policy because I believe that with good, creative, innovative policy, you can change thousands of lives. And that's why I've taken a, taken a deep dive into figuring out the real nuts and bolts of how to turn this thing around. And I'm the only, oh, please, please, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone's working, that's good. You know, so my comprehensive plan, I'm the only guy in this race to lay out a plan and the contrast between me and my opponent is stark. While I'm talking about plans and talking to working families in Pennsylvania, my opponent uh, is siding with big corporations and the big banks. He voted for a $700 billion bailout for Wall Street, sits on the Financial Services Committee, but then votes against any kind of reform. Doesn't want to, to change any of those reckless practices that got us into this problem in the first place. Furthermore, he's supported um, continuing the tax loopholes. He's voted against closing these tax loopholes that send jobs overseas. And then he votes against um, a bill that would have provided job training for people who lost their jobs due to outsourcing. So it's clear where his uh, focus is. He's with the big business. He's with Washington. He is with uh, the special interests that line his campaign coffers while most people are focused on working families. That's what I'm focusing on. That's why I'm coming out. We're doing these kind of events all across the district to talk about what really matters in this district, the real people, jobs and working families. So that's why I'm here today. I'm happy to take questions on all this thing, but I hope you recognize how clear the differences are, how, how clear the contrast is it between what I'm talking about and what my opponent uh, has been pushing for now 20 years as a career politician. Happy to take questions. Thanks again to the, uh, the owners and the, the employees here. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys. And, and thanks for everybody who came out today. Any questions? Laws like Arizona. We need comprehensive uh, reform that focuses on strengthening our borders, uh, making sure that uh, you know, we get people out of the shadows. You know, my parents were immigrants. They followed the rules, filed the paperwork, got in line, and, and came to this country uh, uh, legally. That's what we need to figure out how to do with, with everybody. We need a comprehensive immigration form that's going to uh, make sure these everybody pays their back taxes if they haven't already, gets in the back of the line, and then gets on a pathway to citizenship. That's the only solution. The, the other people uh, like to talk about all this rhetoric, but no one has a real solution. I propose a real solution. So we, so those people who are working illegally right now and uh, you know uh, are in unsafe practices, unsafe conditions, can be 
uh, looked after, but also so everybody is on a level playing field. We can't have companies that uh, that hire illegal immigrants and then others who don't, and, and then they have them at a disadvantage. That's that's hurting um, our competitive advantage in, in a lot of these com com companies who do follow the rules. So we need comprehensive reform and a comprehensive solution, not state by state solutions, not reactionary measures like the one in Arizona. Well, last week uh, in Reading, Jim Gerlach. Uh, at Burke's Technical Institute brought up the issue of jobs. Yeah. Uh, but the Republicans have voted against every jobs bill in Congress. Exactly. Uh, how do you think Congressman Gerlach can reconcile those two positions? You know, I don't think he can. I mean, this is the truth. He likes, like all the other Republicans, they talk a big game. When you look at their vote, when they look at their record, they have no solutions. And yet, and things like health care or, or, or jobs, I'm ready and willing and able to have a healthy discussion. But let's, let's, let's get this economy back on track. The truth is, Republicans like Jim Gerlach and everybody else just want to see Obama fail. They want to see Congress fail, and in turn, they want to see the country fail because they just t talk a big game. But when the rubber meets the road, when, it, when we ask them about policies of how to get the economy moving, how to get health care fixed, they provided no solution. They provided no answers, and that's just evident of the Washington politics that Gerlach practices all the time. He's not in touch with what's going on in Pottstown. He doesn't get it that. Reading, you know, is hurting. It's a city under Act 47. He doesn't know the unemployment rate is soaring in, in, in Berks County. He's worried about his special interest in D.C., making sure that John Boehner, you know, who he fundraises with, get, you know, gets there. John Boehner is a guy who uh, has talked about rating Social Security, you know, and uh, uh, talking about uh, privatizing Social Security. A lot of Republicans have done that, and, and, and that's really concerning to me. These guys are out of touch with what's really going on in the district. Well, Gerlach also mentioned extending the Bush tax cuts uh, as a job creator, whereas during the Clinton administration, balancing the budget created 22 million jobs. When George W. Bush became president and enacted the, the huge tax cuts, job creation crawled to almost nothing. Uh, what's your reaction to that statement he made last week? Well, look, the Bush tax cuts uh, are, in, for one thing, unfair. Why are we giving a tax cut to the wealthiest 2%? If anybody, we should be giving a tax incentive tax break to small businesses right now. So why should the wealthiest 2% get a, a tax break? If anybody should get a tax break, it's the, the middle class, it's small businesses. But moreover, these tax breaks, like you said, haven't worked. What have they done over the last years? They haven't uh, improved the economy, and at a time where we need to be cutting the deficit, it's estimated these tax breaks will increase the deficit by something like over $650 billion. So it's a failed policy. It's another Republican talking point that doesn't make sense. But these guys keep pushing it because that's all they know. 